Okay, so I thought we could take a look at how we might use a matrix part um, that we've made and bring it over to Countersketch Studio version 4 uh, to be used in, in freehand mode. So I've designed this head and the setup for this is probably the subject for another video, but pretty much I have a series of curves that I can use to um, edit the shape of the head. Everything is history enabled thanks to matrix 7.5 and we can tweak this to get the shape just right. Uh, we could change the size and shape of our prongs and all that good stuff. Um, so once we're kind of happy with what we have, we can um, we can export this. Okay, so to get this ready to export there's a couple things we need to do um, because we are going to counter sketch. We want to remove all the curves and any gem objects that may be in the model. So I want to go ahead and just delete my gem. Of course we would save a copy of this uh, before doing these next few steps. And I'll go to super select, select all my curves and delete them. And then I can join this up and export it. So we'll go ahead and export and I'll just save it out as four prong setting just a standard 3DM. Okay, so we'll overwrite that. And the next step is to open counter sketch. And I'll just hop right into freehand mode. Okay, so what we can do is we can go into uh, our counter sketch menu and we'll do import part and we'll load in four prong setting. And you can see it pops up right here. So this is the user category. In freehand mode we have all the different categories of parts that are available here on the side. This one's in the user category. So we'll go ahead and open that and there's the four prong setting we made now in counter sketch. So we have some control over this. It's not dynamic like some of the other freehand parts might be. Um, but this is, um, this does give us the ability to move, scale, and rotate this. So if we wanted to make the head taller or shorter, we could do that. If we wanted to scale the entire head up or down, we could do that. Uh, and of course, we could rotate it and move it into position. So um, any changes to the actual design that you'd want to make, you'd probably have to go back to Matrix and, uh, and edit this and re-export it. So... But I'm happy with this, so we'll go ahead and load in a shank for it. So we'll go to shanks, and I'll just load in this pinched shank down here. And this does have some controls, which we'll edit just a little bit. We'll go ahead and change the bottom width, and we'll change the top width a little bit. Okay, and then what we can do is um, we'll drop it down and we'll make this thing a size 6. So we'll go ahead and rebuild that to a size 6. And now I can move this head into position. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, and that should work. I'm going to put a stone here as kind of an accent stone. So uh, to do that we'll go into gems and settings and we will load in this uh, this 1.2 millimeter bezel set round. We'll go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees, move it forward a bit, and then we'll scale this up a little bit so we'll go to somewhere around a two millimeter maybe. Uh, maybe not quite that big. Okay, so scoot that up. We'll make that bezel just a touch thicker on the top. And we can move this out.
and we'll mirror to the other side. Okay, so there that is, and um, we'll get it in here as close as we can. Okay, so there's pretty much our ring. Um, so now we just need to load in the center stone so we can get a, a good render off this. So we'll go back to gems and settings. We'll load in our gem. And I believe this was made for somewhere around a 7.6 millimeter um, or maybe a hair larger. So. There we go. Okay, so there's our there's our ring. Um, it's fairly fairly simple in design, but it uses the the setting that we made in Matrix, and uh, now we're able to have that in Counter Sketch to incorporate with our design. Okay.